In this video, we're going to use Microsoft Excel to construct um, a confidence interval for a population mean. We'll be using a z-statistic for that as well. So here's an example, simple random sample, size n is drawn. The sample mean is found to be 19.5, and the sample standard deviation s is found to be 4.9. So we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval about the population mean that the sample size n is 35, and these are the answers. Now how do we get that interval? Well, I've created a document here in Excel, a little bit about it. The blue boxes will always be inputs and the red boxes will always be outputs. So here we're going to enter our sample standard deviation and our sample mean. We need to get a t statistic and then we have n for the number. So let's put our information in there first. Sample standard deviation is 4.9 and 19.5 for the mean. Okay, and then we need our n, and our n is 35. So I'll put 35 in there. Now, in order to calculate the upper and lower bounds, we need this equation here. This is found in the book, and we just need to calculate it here. So we have the sample mean plus the uh, critical t value times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the n. And we only need to get this, this um, critical t value by using the back of the book. There's a chart in the back of the book. Um, here is the chart. Looks like this, called table, I think table four or something, table six, excuse me. And we need to know the degrees of freedom, which are one less than the n value. And then we need to know what confidence level we're using. Now, this is like a normal z statistic confidence level. If you're doing a 90%, excuse me, a 95% confidence interval like we're doing, you have 95% of the information here, and these are the two bounds we're looking for. And in this tail, there's 2.5%, and in this tail, there's 2.5%. So in our example, when it says a 95% confidence interval, we need to find a t statistic with 0 0.025 or 2.5% area to the right of that. Okay, so the t statistic is found by taking the degrees of freedom, which is 34, going down the th until you get to 34, and then going over to 0 0.025, which is this column here, because that would be a 95% confidence interval, and we match them up. That would be this number right there, 2.032. So we use that as our critical value, 2.032. We plug it in here, 2.032. So that's the information we need to get. Now we're allowed to cu calculate our bounds. Equals the sample mean plus the critical value here times the sta sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Hit enter, and this will be our upper bound. The lower bound, same thing except with a subtraction. So we enter that in quickly, divided by the square root of the n. And then if I want to know the error, the error is just the difference between, say, the sa sample mean and the lower bound. Okay, so there's that information. And now we're able to go and quickly fill this out. Let's see if I can situate it here. There we go. The upper bound was 21.18, upper bound 21.18. Remember this comes second, it's always an interval, smaller number to bigger number, and 17.82, 17.82. Now with the next question, if we want to do a 95% confidence interval again, and with a size 61, all we do is we take a new n, we put it in there, and we have to find a new a new t statistic. So I replace this with a 61 and I go on the same t table and grab same column because 95% but go to 60 and 60 would be right here so we're looking at 2, exactly 2. I change this to exactly 2. Everything else remains the same and my upper and lower bound are calculated automatically. 18.25 and 20.76.
So this is kind of a nice table once you have it set up. The calculations are done automatically. That's basically all there is to it, but you might be given some raw data. So in this question, we're given some raw data, so we just need to calculate a little bit more information. So I'm going to take this information and copy it. And it wants to use the data to compute a point estimate, so the sample mean, and then construct a confidence level. So we can do that. Go in here and I'll paste my data in. And we need to now compute a few things. We need to get the sample mean. We need to get a standard deviation. And to do that, we have to do this formula here. This comes back from just the basic standard deviation form, formula for uh, normal population. Excuse me, normal sample. So we get this information and calculate it, and then we input that information up into the blue boxes to get our bounds. So let's do that. The mean is just the average of all of them, so I'm just going to type in average and take, drag that down. So this will have to be done each time. The calculated standard deviation, we need to find the sum of the squared deviations, so we need to do this over here. I'm going to take that one and subtract the mean, put them in parentheses, then we just need to square that and I'm going to put a dollar sign on the F12 because that will keep me pointing at this mean because I want to take the difference between that and the mean for each of them. Hit enter and then I'm just going to drag that down all the way to the bottom. Okay, there we have the square deviations. Now I'm going to add that up. That's what this box is for. I'm just doing it piece by piece because that will be my numerator. I'm going to sum that up, creating that formula step by step rather than all at once. So in case uh, I might make a calculation error. Now it's pretty easy because it's equal to the square root of the numerator divided by n minus 1. Well, I haven't put my n in there yet, but there's my n minus 1. I'm going to use this column for n minus 1 and hit enter. And it's going to be error for right now until I enter my n and my n minus 1. And my n, we have to count them. So I'm going to use this for a count. I just have it count the boxes that are from here all the way down. It counts if there's something in there and returns a value. And then my n minus 1 is just going to be 1 less than this box up here. So now my standard or my standard deviation is calculated because the F16 refers to this box down there, which is n minus one. Okay, those are our values. Now we just got to go back up here and put them in and find the t st statistic. So or find the excuse me the critical t value. N was 40. My s standard deviation was. 1.213406, put as much information as you can. I mean 2.337. And now we need to fill this in as well. So we have N is 40, so we have 39 degrees of freedom. And we want a 90% interval. So 2.90% so interval with 39 degrees of freedom. So 90% would be a 0 0.05 in each tail. So that's that column, 0 0.05. And 39 would be right there, so 1.685. Go back here, 1.685. And then these should be our confidence intervals, the upper and lower bound. Let's just check it out. So it's in millions. First off, the mean is right, 2.337 million, three decimal places. Again, you can have this round off to whatever you want down here. The lower bound of the 90% confidence interval of the population mean is 2.014, 2.01 2 round up to 4, and then the upper bound is 2.660, 2.660.
last thing we're going to do here is just look at determining a sample size. So this is our formula for determining a sample size, and it uses the z um, critical value in order to do that. And then you multiply by the sample mean, divided by the error that you have, and it gives that. So, or sorry, sample mean, standard, sample standard deviation, excuse me. Okay, so here's an example. People were polled, initial surveys results that the sample standard deviation was 16.7 books, complete parts A through D. How many subjects are needed to estimate the number of books read? Number of books read the previous year within four books of the 95% confidence. So within four books is our error, and that's our uh, standard deviation. So I can pl plug that in. Again, the blue box, I insert data, and the red boxes, I won't insert. The error, number of books, was four books. Insert data. And then we just calculate this formula here. So I have the 90%, 95, and 99. I'm going to calculate them all out, and then we can just pick it out. So this error is going to be the same, so I'm always going to set it equal to that, equals that top one. And then we're going to do this three different times. So let's do 90% first. It's just going to be this in parentheses, and we're going to have a numerator. So I'm going to do another parenthesis. The numerator is always in a parenthesis itself when you have something in the denominator. Z, the z critical value of 90%, which is up here, and that's from the book, we discussed it in a previous section, multiplied by the standard deviation, that's the numerator, divided by the denominator, which is the error, and then we end all the parentheses, and then we square it. Now, For some reason this came out to be 47 exactly, but I think I had a problem on my format cells. It should be the decimal places, let's go make it like 7. It didn't come out exactly, see it was it was hidden, I had a problem there. So what we need here is we need, we can't have 47 books or 47 people or 47.16 or you know a fraction, so we need to do the round up function again. And that just, we go in front of here and we say round up parenthesis open. We come here, we do a comma, how many digits do we want to round up? Zero to a, a natural number. And now it's 48. Then basically that's what I had it set before. I go back and format the cells and I don't want any decimals. It'll always be 48, you know. So it rounds that decimal up. So you can just leave it as the 47.1234, whatever it is, and you can remember to round it up because you can't have a fraction of a person or a fraction of a book or something. Now I'll calculate those things with the same things down here. Let me pause it. Okay, so now we have them all figured out, and then we can go back to our question. It said for a 95% confidence interval, it requires 67 subjects, and that's what we have here. For the 95% confidence interval, we have 67. Okay, for 90% uh, you need 48, and for a, more, a higher confidence level you need 116. The next question says the confidence level that requires how? Excuse me, how many subjects are needed to estimate the number of books within two books of the 95% confidence? Well, now that we have everything done, we just go up here and ch change that to two. The 95% confidence now changes. That changes to two as well and it's 268. So it's quite a difference to have within just two books. So that's how you can also do finding the determining the sample size n with a population mean.